to do here on earth, first of all, is for a purpose. Right. God always places you through a trial for, for a specific purpose, for you to learn something, for you to grow from it. But then any trial you're going through is just temporary compared to eternity. Amen. So it's mercy, not getting what we do deserve. Then it says, uh, mercy unto you in peace. Yeah. Peace. Thank you. A peace is a fruit of the Spirit. Good. Those of you that are from Reformers, of course, and Reformers, you talk a lot about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace is number three on the list. And the peace of God, it passes all understanding. Yeah. Understanding. According to Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, that passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank those are some, some of you, it sounds like you got those verses memorized. If you don't, those are a couple good ones right there. Sure. Yeah. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious. Don't be troubled. Right. Don't be worried. Amen. That's really telling us don't be worried yep. about anything. Uh, peace, I was thinking about, you know, what's a good way to illustrate peace in the life of a Christian? And I uh, think about funerals. Yeah. You know, when you're at a funeral of a of, of somebody that you know they were saved, Amen. Difference. and you compare that to a funeral of somebody and you know they were lost, yep. yeah. I mean it's just the difference between night and day. Yes, sir. And you go to that funeral of somebody that was that you know they were saved, they had a great Christian mm -hmm. testimony yeah. and all that. You go to that funeral and yeah, there's sorrow, there's weeping, there's tears, there's sorrow. You miss the person, but. And you got that peace in your heart, knowing right. you're going to see them again one day, and you know that their body is no longer in pain, and you right. can rejoice over that person. But Thessalonians 4.13 talks about that, that we sorrow, not as others which have no hope. But we, 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 we sorrow, but not like the world sorrows. That's right. Ours is just a temporary thing. We miss the person, but man, we look forward to that glad eternal day, Beulah Land, where oh, we get to go to heaven and see them and see our Lord and Savior. It's, it's a wonderful, peaceful thing. But then you compare that to the funeral of somebody you know they were lost, you know, oh, and their family's lost. And then you, you go by the, the casket there, and you hear the people say, well, they were a good person. Uh, hmm. and at least they're not in suffering any longer. And oh, they, 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 you know, they yeah, all the person. different cliches that you hear at funerals, all the things that people say. And then this, I, I've been at funerals, and I've seen the, the weeping and the wailing, and just, yeah. you can tell there's no hope there. <clears throat> Think about the peace that God can give us. Amen. Christians, and it passes all understanding. It's something we can't even explain. That's right. Amen. If you've ever experienced the peace of God in your life, yeah. it's really not something you can even put into words That's and right. explain it to another person. You just have to experience it. <coughs> you have to experience that peace of God. But it's a fruit of the Spirit. Only something that, again, a truly saved person can know. Yep. Verse 2, their mercy and you and peace and love be multiplied. The love also is a fruit of the Spirit. It's the first one on the list. So the fruit of the Spirit is love. <coughs> love is a fruit of the Spirit. Three, well, the three Greek words are for love. Now the Bible, it, it translates love or it translates uh, sometimes charity, especially, you know, the, the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about charity. Yeah. Now, it may tra be translated different ways in the Bible. But for us, we just have the one word, love, basically. And we basically know the context of what we're talking about. You know, I, I could stand up here tonight and say, you know, I love fried chicken. Amen. And I do. Amen. I love Reese's Cups. Amen. And I do. Uh, I love my cat. I love baseball. I can say all those things. But then, if I say, I love my Bible. Yeah. I love my church. Amen. I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus yeah. Christ. You know yeah. the, the difference. When I say I love my cat compared to I love my body, uh, you know the difference. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what kind of love I'm um, talking about. We know by, by the context of it. But there are different uh, Greek words for love. The first one, of course, is the word eros. That's the, an erotic, a type of love that's really not even mentioned or referenced to in the Word of God. That's not something that God wants us to be uh, focused upon. And there's the phileo, it's a brotherly love. Yeah. Of course, it's the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly mm -hmm. love. And the brotherly love, that's a that's a kindness, that's a fondness, that's a, an affection for somebody. Yeah. But then you have the Greek word agape, yeah. that is a giving, sacrificial love. Mm -hmm. It's 
sacrificial love on behalf of someone else, and get this last part, with no selfish thought of return. Amen. See, it's not, okay, I'm going to do, so I'm going to shower my love upon you, I'm going to do something nice for you, because I got ulterior motives, I'm hoping that you do something nice in return. Yeah. Okay? No, 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 that's not, that's not agape love. Agape love is, I'm going to do something nice for you, even if you don't even acknowledge that I did.